Greetings, Commanders. This is Stealth Boy. War has erupted across human populated space. Humanity is threatened by the Thargoid counterattack following the crisis of the Azimus Saga. Commanders across the galaxy have rallied to defend our systems from the invasions in the Black. But now, the time has come for us to fight back on foot as a new threat has emerged. There is no hope. There is no salvation. Join me as I show you how we can help restore humanity's defenses and fight back. Welcome to the definitive guide to AX Restoration. In update 15, Elite Dangerous Odyssey received a content update introducing a new on foot mission. These missions are a variation of the settlement restoration missions where the objective is to bring abandoned settlements back online. The new AX versions provide a whole new experience and can be very challenging to complete with a brand new threat for commanders to counter on foot. Overall, I found the new content to be exciting and atmospheric with good rewards and they can be completed alone if you don't play with friends. The on foot section has minimal equipment requirements, but you may need to have a decently upgraded ship to access them. This guide will introduce these new missions and explain what they're about and break down each stage so you can complete them safely and quickly. This is what you'll learn in this guide. Part 1 explains what the new AX restoration missions are, why you should do them and how you can find them. Part 2 covers everything you'll need to complete these missions including some optional things that will make the process easier but aren't essential. Part 3 outlines how to get to and infiltrate the settlements. Part 4 introduces the new threats you'll encounter with tips on how to navigate them safely. Part 5 walks you through the mission itself, what is required and how you can do it quickly. Part 6 demonstrates how to escape safely with examples of what you can expect to encounter as you leave the settlement to complete the mission. The last part explores a few issues I and other commanders have found with these missions and hopefully these will be fixed in future so this information may be out of date by the time you're watching this. It's time to begin the guide. From this point onwards there will be spoilers so consider yourself warned. So what are AX restoration missions? Update 15 introduced these as part of the ongoing war against the alien race, the Thargoids. Thargoid content has generally been referred to as Anti-Xeno or AX. Until now, most AX content has been accessed via ship combat or activities. This update is the first foray by Frontier Developments into giving us AX content on foot and this is the reason this is so exciting for those of us who love to play Elite Dangerous Odyssey. I feel it's a solid start and I hope they continue to add more of the same in future. These missions are a spin on the standard settlement restoration missions where the settlement is occupied by a new threat and they are a lot more challenging to complete in many ways. They do require a different approach but if you're familiar with completing settlement restoration missions and are used to handling scavenger attacks then you should be able to complete them without too much difficulty. Why should you try these missions out? For me, the main reason is they're atmospheric and exciting. The experience isn't like anything else in on-foot gameplay. They also provide greater rewards, paying a lot more in credits and offering very good data rewards as well. To locate these systems, you'll first need to find one that is under Thargoid Alert or Invasion. In this guide, I visited systems in the invasion state and you can find this information on the Galmap filter pane here. The systems listed here are not a full list and you can search for them manually in the map with the filter applied. Look for these icons. Something that's important to be aware of when looking for a good system to find these missions is that they do appear to follow the usual background simulation rules for mission population. That is to say that in order for you to see a mission to a settlement, the faction offering the mission must have settlements in a neighboring system that is within 20 light years of the system under invasion. Also note that this mission type can only occur in military settlements, as it is these that you must bring back online first for humans to begin the fight back and reclaim the system. 
This does mean that the pool of potential locations is limited, so you may need to search a while to find a good candidate. Once you've found a system in the invasion state, dock at any starport or outpost and check the mission board. As the system is under lockdown due to the invasion state, many services aren't available and this includes the option to disembark your ship on foot. You can find these missions on the mission board on your ship under the operations category. This is a typical AX restoration mission. Once you've found one, you want to try, accept the mission and it's time to head out. One thing to be wary of is you should check the target system in Galmap and find what state it is in. As of update 15.01, the new variant of Thargoid ship, the Glaive, will now interdict and hyperdict you in Thargoid controlled states. These very fast and deadly Thargoids are very difficult to escape even in a very fast ship. If you want to avoid these, then look for missions pointing to systems in invasion state instead. This section will cover what you need to complete AX missions. Before you take an AX restoration mission, you should make sure you have everything you need. I'll first list the essentials. You'll always need a Maverick suit, so you can use the Arc Cutter to gain access to the Power Center. You will need a ship as well, as you cannot use Apex to get to or leave the settlement. In terms of the absolute essentials for the on-foot section of the mission, that is all you need. However, your ship may get attacked by Thargoids on route to and when returning from the settlement, so I strongly recommend you use a very fast ship as a minimum. Strong shields will help, although it's not entirely essential if you can avoid most attacks, but if you don't have strong shields then expect to have a repair bill on your return. Large ships are fine, but you'll need to land manually on arrival, so this may make things more difficult. But if you're used to handling the landing of large ships on planets, then this shouldn't be a problem for you, and you get the added benefits of the ship being much more defensively capable. Small ships are useful as they can be faster and are much easier to find a landing spot on the surface, but make sure your shields are strong enough to withstand an attack by Thargoid ships. I prefer using a medium ship for these missions and my favourite is the Crate Mark II as it is fast and very capable defensively. Of course if you are already a capable AX pilot and own an AX Vita chip that can fight Thargoids effectively then you'll be at an advantage here. This is not required though so don't worry if this isn't you. For efficiency I recommend equipping your ship with a vehicle bay for an SRV. This will let you get to and from the settlement and your ship much faster. SRV loss is a risk here, so if you can fit a larger vehicle bay for two SRVs then this may come in useful if you attempt more than one AX mission in a row. I prefer the Scarab SRV for its speed. You can handle the on-foot threat in this as well, uh, but this guide will not cover that and I'm considering the SRV only for the purpose of travelling to and from the settlement quickly. Finally, if you want to fight back against the on-foot enemies that I'll introduce later in the guide, then I recommend getting yourself a Karma L6 RPG that's upgraded to at least Grade 3. I'll explain more about this later. Getting to the settlement is somewhat different to normal restoration missions as you are travelling through Thargoid war regions of space. The first challenge you may encounter is being hyperdicted, where a Thargoid will disrupt your hyperspace jump and pull you into normal space and immediately attack. This is where a fast ship will save you. As soon as you exit hyperspace, throttle to maximum and boost repeatedly in the same direction. If you're attacked by scouts, there will always be four of them, so you can put four pips into shields initially until far enough away so they stop shooting. You can then put on four pips into engines and continue to boost until the FSD cooldown counter expires. At this point, you can continue to jump to your destination. If you do struggle to survive these attacks, you may need to upgrade your ship's shields and thrusters. When traveling in supercruise to the destination planet, there's a high chance you'll get interdicted by Thargoids as well. The same method escape will work here and I recommend submitting to the interdiction by throttling to zero when it happens so you get the faster FSD reboot timer. This may happen several times on longer supercruise journeys. 
as mentioned earlier in the guide, if you venture into Thargoid controlled systems, there's a chance the new Hunter type of Thargoid, the Glaive, will attack you. These Thargoids have FSD containment missiles, which will stop you from using your FSD for a time. They can use the EMP attack to disable your ship, and they can fire their electric attack if you get closer than one kilometer away, which depletes your shields very quickly and dampens your thrusters, slowing you down. They can outrun ships that exceed 700 meters per second, so they will catch most commanders unless running an extremely fast ship. If you intend to take AX restoration missions in Thargoid control systems, then I recommend fitting your ship with heat sinks. If you do get attacked by a glaive, use a heat sink or turn on silent running. This will reduce your ship's heat signature, making it harder for the glaive to attack you. You then need to turn your ship to face the glaive and boost straight past it, taking care to avoid its electric attack, as this will cut your momentum significantly. If you can keep your ship cool and get past the glaive, you can keep doing this until you're able to engage your FSD again and high wake to another system to escape. If you wish to avoid these deadly enemies altogether, avoid Thargoid control systems. On planetary approach, get to a low altitude as soon as you can and use the terrain to block the view from you to the settlement where possible. These settlements will be occupied by Revenants, which are a new type of Thargoid threat and I'll go into more detail on them later in the guide. Your ship will get attacked by Revenants that roam the settlement if your ship gets closer than around one kilometre. You should look to land your ship between one and two kilometres away from the settlement, so look for relatively flat regions nearby. Ideally, land in a location that gives you land cover between your ship and the settlement itself, and this will allow you to get much closer with your SRV before you need to start on foot. You don't want to take too long deciding where to land, however. After a couple minutes or so, Thargoid ships will begin to drop into the space above the settlement, and they will attack your ship on site. If this does happen, you can choose to escape and try again, or commit to landing if you feel confident your ship is strong enough defensively to withstand an attack for a short time. Future guides may cover all of these settlement types in more detail for the best strategy to complete these missions, and maybe new missions if they are added, so do remember to like and subscribe if you want to keep updated when I release new videos. Once you've landed, deploy your SRV and immediately dismiss your ship. This is a must whenever you attempt these missions. If you do not dismiss your ship, then it will get continually attacked by Thargoids and will be destroyed before you can complete the mission, leaving you stranded on the planet. Begin your approach to the settlement in the SRV and try to keep the settlement out of line of sight as shown here. Your SRV will get attacked by Revenants if you get closer than around 800 meters and you can be seen from the settlement. On terrain like this, you can get as close as 300 to 400 meters and remain undetected. If the settlement is on very flat terrain and there is no cover, then you will need to leave it parked at least 800 meters away and run on foot for the remainder of the distance. Once on foot, you will not get spotted by revenants unless you are very close, so you can freely cover the remaining distance to the settlement without fear of getting attacked, but be wary of patrolling revenants on the perimeter. They're easy to spot, and you can see them here. Before we get into the actual mission itself, it's time to introduce the revenants properly. Revenants are skimmer-style enemies, and you'll encounter around six or more of them in these settlements. It's usually possible to entirely avoid them on these missions, and this section of the guide will help you to do that. It'll also show you what to do if you do get seen and attacked, and I'll also give you some tips on the safest way to destroy them if necessary. Revenants roam the settlement in relatively predictable paths once you get to know them. The patrolling revenants will typically move around the edge of the settlement in straight lines, but they are fast and they often turn back unexpectedly, so be wary of that and be prepared to save your energy to sprint for cover when you get close to the settlement perimeter. You can get quite close to them without being seen. They'll only detect you if you enter the bright yellow search light projecting from their front facing side. It's possible to get right up to the edge of this light and not get seen, 
but the safest approach is to stay away as much as possible. They do require line of sight to see you, but they can see you through windows. Revenants do not react to sound in any way, so don't worry about making any noise, even loud ones. They will react if one of them begins to fire upon you, and they'll all swarm to you if that happens. They have two attacks. Their primary attack is a laser, seen here. This will deplete your shield quickly, but does less damage to your suit. They won't fire the laser unless they can see you. The other attack is this grenade style attack. They'll attempt to use this even if they cannot see you. It is easy to avoid, but if you do get hit by it, then it will do a lot of damage. It has a small radius though, so you should be alright as long as you watch out for it and move away. The safest way to avoid revenants is to be inside any building. They will never follow you inside, so if they do attack you, then your priority is to get into a building. Always deploy your shields and head for safety as quickly as you can. You can withstand attack from them with shields up and even take quite a bit of damage if they break through your shields, so you may decide to risk cutting open the power centre doorway whilst under fire to escape. Remember, with your SRV parked far away and with limited supplies, you are somewhat against the clock, so you should be aiming to get into the power centre as quickly as possible. Once the power is back on, all the doors in the settlement will open for you as you are granted level 3 access, so you'll always have lots of places to run for safety if you do get attacked. Revenants will give up and reset to their normal patrolling patterns after several seconds of not being able to see you. If you cannot get into a building quickly and get attacked, your next best option is to stay on the ground and seek shelter. Revenants will not hover lower than a few meters above the ground, so if you can get some type of cover where they cannot see you, then they will eventually give up and reset. If you are in the open and have no cover, the final resort is just to run. Revenants will not chase you forever, and if you can get to the edge of the flattened terrain that surrounds the settlement, they'll eventually give up. I find strafing from left to right can help avoid their laser attack. If you are attacked by revenants in your SRV, then you can escape by driving quickly away from the settlement. Try to get out of line of sight if you can. They'll eventually give up and reset. You can fight back if you like. They can be targeted in the SRV and your attacks will kill them as quickly as a normal skimmer. The best weapon to destroy them on foot is the L6 RPG Grade 3 or better as this will destroy them in a single hit. This is the only weapon that can kill revenants in a single shot, which is important, because then they won't fight back and swarm. You can see this grade 2 rated L6 doesn't quite finish the target off in a single shot. Even a grade 5 executioner won't manage to one-shot kill revenants, unless you hit them from behind as it looks like this is their weak point. As you can see here, if they're not aware of you, then you can use the G3 L6 to kill them without any of the other revenants knowing. As mentioned earlier, revenants do not react to sound made by you in any way, so this is a very strong tactic for clearing the way if you need. Just be aware that if you kill more than a single revenant, then this will happen. This is a Thargoid Scout, and it will drop down and deploy four more Revenants every time you start killing them. It is possible to continually destroy these if you have access to most buildings and have powered up the settlement, as you can replenish your suit power and ammo infinitely in most cases. Just be aware that you'll never fully clear the settlement. At least that is how it seems from my experience so far. So if you find different, then please do let me know in the comments. I will tend to kill revenants if I need to access an objective, and there are too many of them in the way. So long as you move quickly through the area after killing them, you'll have plenty of time to get clear before more arrive. Combat is not required on these missions most of the time. If you wish to complete the mission and remain undetected, you can do so by just being patient and waiting for the right opportunity to make your move. I recommend taking time to familiarise yourself with the Revenant patrol routes and always wait until they move before you do. 
Remember, they can be quite close and won't see you unless their searchlight lands on you. Even if you do get seen, you do have enough time to cut open a door and gain access to the power center in most cases. Now you've been fully briefed on the enemy threat, it's time to outline what you'll need to do on these missions. Anyone familiar with Restore missions will probably not need to follow this section of the guide, but they do differ to those missions as they have a secondary objective that you'll need to complete after powering the settlement. Your first objective is to find the power center seen here. Some have two entrances and some only have one. Make sure you pick the entrance that gives you the most cover from Revenants. Take care to watch them for their patrol paths and make your move when you feel it is safe. Some power centers are nowhere near to Revenants and some are right in front of them. Remember that you do have level 3 clearance as part of these missions, so you only need to use the normal power tool function to open the doors, and you do not need to use the more energy hungry overload function. Once inside, place the power regulator into the housing and power up the settlement. I recommend waiting for this to complete before taking anything from lockers or data ports, as the next objective may lead you there anyway. Remember to recharge your suit's power when done. At this point, you should see your next objective. This is typically a data or asset retrieval objective, and anyone familiar with these types of objectives should have no problems finding the target. If you're not sure of where the objective is, your next step is to locate a terminal and find the objective location. Once you've tagged the target location, you can see it on your compass, and it's now time to make your way there. To avoid revenants, you may need to skirt around the edges of the settlement like this. A lot of buildings have alternative entrances that can allow you to entirely avoid revenants. As a general tip, I prefer to remain on the ground when avoiding revenants as they are hovering above the height of buildings and you get more cover on the ground. You can use rooftops to scope the settlement if you like, just make sure you stay out of the yellow searchlights. Remember, once the settlement is powered up, you can escape aggressive revenants simply by running into any building and you are completely safe inside. Once you get used to this, it really does start to feel a lot safer completing the mission. Feel free to collect any materials you like as this is legal to do so and is a very good source for engineering data and materials to upgrade your gear. Once you're done, it's time to leave. Use your compass to locate your SRV. Taking care to remain out of sight, turn around and head away from the settlement. You are aiming to find flat terrain for your ship to land on when you recall it, and you want to be about 1.5 to 2 kilometers away before you attempt this. Remember, if your SRV has taken any damage, then you can repair it using synthesis, and it only costs 2 iron and 1 nickel to do so. When ready, recall your ship and watch to see where it's going to land. So long as you can see the gear retract when it hovers, then it'll be able to land. If for some reason this doesn't happen, then you may need to dismiss it again and try a different location. At this point, your ship may be attacked by a Thargoid ship. If your ship is strong enough, then you can just commit to boarding, but you may need to dismiss it and try again later. Some Thargoid ships don't leave however, so you may need to try a much further location or upgrade your ship if you struggle at this point. Launch and immediately boost away from the planet and engage supercruise to escape safely. You can then return to hand in the mission. Occasionally you may get hit by the Thargoid EMP style attack that leaves your ship or SRV powerless for an extended period. Don't panic if this happens, in most cases the attacking ship will leave you alone and in this case you can then escape as soon as your ship reboots.
once clear of the planet, you can return to get your reward or move on to the next objective if you have more. Before I conclude this guide, I'll outline a few of the issues and bugs I have encountered while attempting these missions. These will hopefully be fixed or changed in future, so they may be out of date by the time you are watching this. The first issue I encountered is that some settlements are located on bad terrain. In most cases you can find a spot to safely land and recall your ship, but there are some settlements that are situated on the side of mountains or extremely rocky terrain. There just is no way you can recall your ship if you try to do it too close to the settlement, or at best this is very difficult to do. I simply abandon any missions that send me to such locations and I then don't take any that send me there again. Bear in mind that if you do fail or abandon these missions then you do receive a 100,000 credit fine, but you do get to keep the power regulator and use it for upgrades or other missions. Remember to pay this fine before you try to complete the mission. You can do this at the same station you got the mission from. Another issue I encountered rarely was the mission objective simply failing to trigger when you power up the settlement. This can be frustrating and the only way to work around it is to reset the settlement and try again. As doing this also deletes all assets in the settlement, you can go to another settlement first, do the mission there and then return to try again. Resetting and trying again has fixed this bug for me. Some other less critical issues are the fires don't always get extinguished when you disengage atmospheric controls and the power isn't always fully turned back on for the whole settlement. This isn't a big issue in either case but just be aware that these may occur for you. Fires can be avoided most of the time and your shields will protect you against them if you need to move through one and you can use your power tool to turn on terminals that you may need. And that concludes the guide to AX Restoration Missions. I hope you found the guide useful. If the game continues to get updates like this one and more cool content gets added to the on-foot gameplay, then I'll be keen to explore it and provide more videos for you to enjoy. I appreciate the channel has been quiet of late and there are a few reasons for that, but more videos are planned. Whether I cover this game or new games on the horizon or both remains to be seen, but I want you all to know that I appreciate all your support and this channel absolutely will continue to provide content in future. This is a passion of mine, so watch this space. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, stay stealthy.